So the question, one of the questions on my mind um, is AI. Um, there's lots of noise about AI. Mm -hmm. Mainly noise, as far as I can see. Um, I, I, I just pulled up to get the terminology right, the Gartner hype cycle. Um, and I reckon that we are only at the beginning of the inflated expectation curve. We have yet to hit the top of that, let alone the trough of disillusionment. Mm. But I can see that that's where we're going. Also, with a technology like AI, you can call anything AI that you wouldn't have called AI before. <clears throat> so lead scoring, which is something that we're just about to roll out, you could call that AI. Why not? Um, it's what, what quite a few people are calling AI, but which isn't even pattern recognition, it's just maths. And then there's pattern recognition, and then there's machine learning, and then there's you know, serious AI. Mm. Um, so we're beginning to see CRM systems that say they have AI within it. And I can see that this will be useful, particularly for two areas. One is for, uh, for, for lead scoring. Uh, rather than you working out how to score leads, the machine will work out how to score leads. But that will only work if you have a lot of data. And, and we played with the idea of, okay, well, that's okay. This customer only has a little bit of data, but we have lots of customers. So we can use aggregated data mm -hmm. to try and solve their problems for them. But then you think about it and you say no, because this customer's in Venezuela they're selling washing machines, and this customer's in the United States, and they're selling nuclear reactors, and it's probably a different sales cycle. A bit. Um, a bit, yeah, so it's not going to work. Um, so you do need lots of data. Uh, there are probably some things that we could do with emails as to what you know, would help, what would in, 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 enhance engagement with marketing emails, because that is, I think, fairly common across multiple sectors. So I'm, I'm interested to, so answering your question, so what's my question to you? My question to you is, um, where do you see AI going in CRM terms, both the hype and the reality? Well, I think we've already seen a lot of the hype. Uh, as you say, you can call almost anything AI now that you never would have if it has an algorithm in it. Uh, if it's got any kind of math behind the scenes, one could argue that it's artificial intelligence. And there's also the fact that a lot of people don't really have a grasp of what artificial intelligence can and can't do. You know, a lot of us are still working under the, the science fiction idea that this is going to take our jobs because a smart computer is able to do everything a person can. It can't. There are still people who think that. And once we get them past that, that'll be fine. I've seen AI doing reasonably good work uh, in uh, predictive analytics and uh, predictive sales technology um, not being used for sales directly, but as a tool that a human individual has at their disposal, you know, providing either next best action or calling up documents you know. in the midst of a conversation to help the sale go more smoothly. That's one place I see it going where it really already has gone. Something that you just said, um, and I don't remember the specific words you just said, but it inspired me with something. It had to do with marketing. What I would love to see is the end of do not reply email addresses. Put artificial intelligence hooked up to email so that you can reply to those automated messages and get something out of them, even if it's just being rerouted to a human once it has been assessed properly. And again, that might not technically count as AI. That might just be a sorting algorithm. But for service place, reason, it's very yeah. sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. It's a place where it's not being used and it really should be. And if anybody's listening who wants to do that, it's my idea. And I will very happily sell you the IP. 
So it's pretty much the same here. So where the values that seem to come are right now are within scoring models for leads and predominantly opportunities. So there we are talking about, well, at, at the end, a type of predictive analytics, but using the confined area of machine learning. Yeah, so there are, we are talking point solutions there right now. So there is no general AI period. Yeah? And HAL will not be there anytime very soon. Yeah? So it's about solving specific solutions via data and learning solutions. The opportunity scoring and the finding of contacts, the identifications of contacts to talk to when it comes to improving the odds of the sale succeeding. This is on the sales side. On, this, on the service side, what we have is pattern analytics, actually, image analytics and routing of tickets to the right yeah. agents with the right yeah. skill sets based upon text analytics, Shaka. which is another working AI. Yeah. So, well, marketing, we have lead analytics, you already mentioned it. Yeah. So th these are the, the main things and that probably combined in with not only with internal data, but also with external data. This is where, for example, an acquisition of node AI came from. They're dealing with lots of external data, which enriches internal data, which apparently helps in significantly improving the predict prediction for success. So this is where we are at right now. Point and when you then also include um, three um, available sources following the good old open source idea, you find um, grabbers and searching machines like Justney in Germany, which gives you complete profiles which are open to the public and make them integrated into your CRM after a certain validation. And the larger idea I do have is that if we see the digital workplace, which is now a fact, but it has to be established in a more proper way, there we will have um, a lot of use for artificial intelligence, bits and pieces, if it's in the document management, if it's in some pattern um, recognition of fraud attacks, or if it's um, in, in these areas. And CRM is a very important part of that. If it's called customer experience or CDP or the hushi hushi, yeah? But the real thing is, Crazy. if we see it, if we see it not as zwei Stein, drei Stein or four Stein, but we see it as something useful and we see it integrated in what makes life easier to serve our customers better, mm -hmm. then we're on the right track and the next hell may come. John, I'm afraid I can't allow this. This is also what Michael says here in, yeah, in, no. secret, in his secret language named German, so it, it only helps if the decision makers um, can do, can and do trust the results that the AI delivers. And not their gut feeling. Mm -hmm. which, has, which has two preconditions, basically. One is, well, the there needs to be a kind of an explainability. Why did the prescription at the end of the day get there? Why is this the prescription as opposed to the other one that my, my gut tells me? And the other one is learning over time or via the learning, via training the, the machine that proves that the predictions are fairly accurate and more accurate than, well, better than average, far better than average, basically. So I, I like the idea of AI is, is an augmented uh, it augments the decision process, but doesn't replace it. Um, mm -hmm. One of our customers a few years ago uh, was the IBM Watson team. Uh, who used our CRM uh, when they were first setting up 
but they had they had Watson uh, and they were beginning to set it, so they used our CRM system from head office to prospect for him. And we spent a lot of time talking to them. They were quite keen to see if we could interface our CRM into IBM Watson, mm -hmm. which was an interesting idea. But the story that they told me, which I thought really makes sense, was that they were it's being used a lot in cancer diagnosis uh, in the medical profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what um, the customer, the doctor, valued was that the doctor would, would look at you, would work out what they thought were the diagnosis or the possibly, possibly the three problems that you might have. And IBM Watson would suggest a fourth, which you hadn't mm. thought of. Mm. Yeah. And Fair enough. Was, and and, and in this integration, good. if you have an, um, an, an automated diagnosis system, which is sitting aside of the patient at home, and can diagnose by the analysis of your coughing that you have COVID and not some uh, a, a normal cough. That is also a process which some German companies financed out of British money, uh, CarePass, for instance, is servicing and providing. Yeah? Um, I have the pleasure now, after you have had your chance to ask us something, that I'd love to wrap up it if nobody else is objecting. John, I hope you liked it. Our audience definitely did like it. That was really good fun. Yep. Yeah. And um, Glad to thanks for being chance. here. Yeah, we, we liked it too. Thank, it thanks, Ahi. I could go on, but um, as you say, we have to wind up. Uh, well, we I, probably take the chance of doing a follow up. Of course. That's, that's <laughs> even better. Say, the, the cocktail party list is pretty short right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like to end the broadcast, but please stay with us for a minute, John. <laughs>